Not we're nearly there. Oh. That's a, I'm just um, organising some images because I find images help the audience understand what I saw. That's brilliant, yeah. When you're ready, let me know. I'm ready. Right, I've just got to make sure I've got the live up so I can see people's comments. And there's no music Facebook, so there's no need to tell me off. <laughs> oh, there's eight people watching already. Good morning, Laura and May. Right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Time. And it is my distinct pleasure, as always, to welcome the lovely Stacey Sparkle Spark. And we've chatted a few bit about a few things a few times online, haven't we? So oh. I thought she's nice and she's knowledgeable, so I'll invite her back. <laughs> and um, today we're going to be discussing Stacey's NDE and spirit inspiration, because spirit inspiration comes in many ways. And as there's a lot of talk about psychic and what is psychic and what is mediumship, I, I, I dare to say that spirit in, in, inspiration comes through on a psychic level. Stacey may or may not agree with me. But anyway, Stacey, welcome and good morning. I've actually made fresh coffee, so that's great. Um, so anyway, Stacey, as I said, um, we're going to talk about, or you're going to talk about your, your near-death ex experience and what it's meant for you and what you've got from it and what you've got to share from it. So over to you, Stacey. Well, first of all, I'll apologize for the crying baby in the background. <laughs> She's chose a divine time to start, but my daughter will sort her out. So near my near death experience changed my life, my outlook completely, Stephen. Absolutely. I mean, if I if I compare who I was six years ago before my near-death experience, which was five years ago, and the person I am today, you wouldn't recognize me uh, personality-wise at all. So um, I, I believe wholeheartedly that spirit stepped in. Good morning, Lynn. Spirit stepped in and saved me and gave me a massive soul cleansing because prior to my near death, I was in the most deepest, darkest place. I'd had many, many different traumas and I was at the end of my tether. I hated life. I was miserable. Um, to me, it was just an existence. And even though I believed in spirit and life after death, I had lost all hope of where I was going, what I was doing. So at that critical point in my life, ironically, I became very ill and ended up in a coma. And then, well, the surgeon said I was two millimeters from death. Um, and it, I was in a coma and it was in that coma that I met spirit. And that I don't don't ask me how long that meeting last, because on Earth, I was in a coma for five years. Five years. God, that would have been long. Five days. Um, so in the somewhere and there is no time for spirit. Yeah. So for, on Earth, five days. But I was I had this wonderful meeting with spirit and. Um, They showed me my life, okay? They showed me from my earliest memories all the wonderful things I'd said and done to inspire people, all the negative things I'd said and done to hurt people. And it was a real mixture, and it was a massive, massive eye-opener for me because I, at the time, I didn't realise that my words could have such a profound effect on another person. I just thought they were just words, you know, just nothing, no weight behind them. But spirit showed me that my actions and my words were actually fundamental in somebody else's happiness or misery. And um, 
I can tell you I was mortified. Now, don't get me wrong. There was no judgment from spirit. Okay. It was just, look what you did. Look what you said. And look at the effect you had on these people. Um, and then, I, I mean, the love that was washed over me after they'd shown me every moment of my life. Um, it, was, it was a soul cleansing. It was like, right, let's give her a fresh start. You know, she'd suffered quite a lot, which I had, quite a lot of really horrific traumas. Um, and uh, I forgave myself, Stephen, for everything I'd done and said. And I, I reevaluated and said, right, okay, here I am. I understand now what you're trying to tell me. Now, I said to Spirit when I was in this NDE, am I staying? And they said, no, you're going back. You've got work to do. I didn't want to come back then. I was happy. I was at home. I felt so much love in this beautiful cocoon that spirit had brought me into you know I didn't want to come back to earth but I had no free will there was no choice <laughs> I had to come back and I woke up from my coma five days and um my first thought was you sent me back why I so desperately wanted to stay so I think with my health issues uh, that I'd woken up to with the necrotizing fasciitis and the fact I had to learn to walk and talk and eat and do all those crazy things, um, I've probably entered a, a, a mini six month readjustment of being back in this physical body because when I was with spirit, I felt so light, so free. So, and the human body is heavy. You know, I didn't realize how heavy this, this, this body is to move around and stuff. So um, the enlightenment I got from my near death was, was like I say, life-changing. You know, pre-coma, I was writing poetry that was dark. I was angry, I was getting into fights and arguments with everybody after the coma and after I learnt to, you know, six, seven months after I learnt to walk and talk and stuff again. But my outlook was different and I, um, I appreciate my life now. I'm inspired to, to do my paintings. Um, I'm a happier person. And I, I know the power of spirit now. I know the power of love. Crazy. I'm not going to start singing though. <laughs> but Please the power sing. of love, <laughs> uh, it, is, it is unbelievable, beautiful. Spirit love us so flipping much, honestly. And I wish, it, I know I've said it before when I've spoke to other people, I wish people could feel the love like I felt in my near death. That's what spirit have for us. Because when I'm going through my daily business with my family and stuff, and you know, when the kids are being a pain and stuff, I, I actually remind myself, you're loved by spirit. And it makes me feel better. It's a hell of a comfort, you know? It kind of brings you back like into, like it's like mindfulness. That's what it is. It's like I I think about everything I say and do now, you know, and how it will affect you, and 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 you as in the, the people. So, yeah, I've got. Um, I feel like a bit of a Buddha half the time because people come to me and, and ask me questions, and I'm like, you know, it's true what they say. Look inside yourself. Yeah. Oh, well, I agree. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Oh, shut up. No, 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 no. You can interrupt. Anyone can interrupt. Any oh, questions? Okay. I want to show you what I saw. Because to understand what you, what I personally saw when I went to the spirit world, I mean, this is only a rough guide, obviously, but 
I was surrounded by light beings, yeah? My first, when I first realized I wasn't on the earth and I wasn't in my physical body, I looked around me and this is the kind of light, they showed themselves in human form so that I would accept what I was looking at. I think that's what happened because if they were just little balls of light, I'd have been like, what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? So this is the kind of images I saw, right? And they, like, they're neither male nor female, okay? They are, that's what they, oh, my camera, let me turn the thingy off. Right, so these light beings appeared to me in human, like, like a human form, so that I would accept them better. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Um, and these, I, I had a look on the internet for something similar to what I saw. And these were the closest things I came up with, you know, because there were no faces, Stephen. There were no faces because you only get a face on a physical body. You don't get a face on a, on a, a light being. Okay. <laughs> That's a weird one to acknowledge. <laughs> Yeah, but what, what I'm always saying to people, and this is something that a spirit guide told us years ago, you know, in circle, he'd come through, Lee would come through here in trance. He said, we only show ourselves in a physical image just purely for recognition, nothing more. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you know it's your granddad or you know it's your Native American guide. Everything yeah. like that. But that yeah. love that you felt, I mean, I often feel demonstrate because... I could feel that love, and it's a love that you can't put into words. Yeah. I, I, I say to people, you know, and I'm giving messages to, if you if you knew, if you could experience the love that is coming through for you now, you'd be floating on air. You wouldn't think you had any problems, anything like that. But get, getting back to um, what you said earlier, um, not a lot of people watching these NDEs on YouTube, not a lot of people do want to come back, do they? They think, oh, well, cut out old age and, um, you know, getting iller and iller, you know, let's not go back. But it, it's sort of like, like you were saying, a spiritual reset, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. like they recharge you. And what they're saying to you is you have purpose. Yes. Yeah, you, you know, have purpose, not, yeah. Not, not only to... I don't know, bring something back into the world, but to bring that love back into the world. Oh, absolutely. You know, and only the way we can understand that love is just by simply by saying it's pure, unconditional love. Because would you yeah. agree that we're not judged in spirit? We're just no. shown like you were. Yeah, and there's no judgment at all in spirit. You know, no, it, it's, it's your path. This is what's been going on on Earth. What do you think you can do? Yeah. How can you, how can you, well, the message I kind of got from my end of years, um, it was a, an eye opener in showing me, look, I'm sure without them actually saying it, you can be a better person. And in being a better person to yourself and to others would raise the vibration because your vibration is very low. You know, you're miserable, you're, you're arguing and you don't want that negativity. So what spirit want us to do when we come to Earth and have this Earth like human experience is to make the best of our experiences, to make the best of our lives, to be kind, to learn, to to have knowledge, not to be spiteful and cruel to one another. You know? we, we, we're supposed to be loving each other. In spirit, it's about emotions. When you die, spirit don't care what car you had, what house you lived in. It's about what good did you do for yourself and for others? Were you a kind person? Were you helpful? You know, did you share your love and knowledge with each other? That's what spirit want for us to be kind and to learn. Yes, we've got things we've got to go through. We sign up for traumas so that we can understand what it feels like to empathize and to grow spiritually. Because like, for instance, just um, 
I told my daughter, childbirth is painful. But it was only when she went through that childbirth, she could understand the pain of giving birth to another little human. We can talk, but it's just words unless yeah. we go through it. You know what, Stacey, my, my spiritual teacher told me, and I'll pass this on to whoever's unfortunate enough to get taught by me, but um, I always tell them, if you want to understand something, become it. Like your daughter, you're yeah. saying childbirth's painful. She didn't really understand until she was giving birth herself. Um, and to the two ladies here, if you want to say anything to Stacey, there's a little thing where you can stick your hand up. Or if you can't find that, <laughs> stick your hand up. <laughs> oh, Lynn wants to say something. We'll get her on in a second. All right. But what I want to, going back to your early point about no judgment, um, a lot of the NDE videos I've watched, um, like you, you feel everything that your words have said, the effect that they've had on another person or the physical harm that you've caused them or whatever, or how you've changed the course of your life, their lives yeah, by your yeah. words. So, and I think you're very right. Be mindful of what you're saying, what you're doing. Yeah. You yeah. know, to share that knowledge and that love. Where's she gone? We're just going to get her on. But, um, <laughs> oh, there's another one on, but she's, she's gone now. But um, what I want to say is, and I've forgotten, um, it's spirit teaching that all knowledge should be shared. Yeah. Okay, well, so you and everybody else that's had an NDE is coming back to earth sharing that knowledge. Yeah. Okay, and I think we as spiritualists should understand all this. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now and let Lynn say what she needs to say. Okay, I'm going to ask you to unmute, Lynn. Okay, if you can unmute and speak to Stacey, that'd be great. Thank you. Hello. Well, I know Stacey. Stacey taught me tarot cards, and I think she is absolutely wonderful i think i was only talking about you this morning stacy and saying what a fabulously gracious lady you are so um thank you for all that you've taught me and for being with me um listening to you this morning i'm wondering i've had a couple of dreams um and i know you can visit the spirit world in your dream state so in particular, I wondered what you think of both of these incidents that happened to me. Um, my granddaughter is um, in the spirit world, having passed over in a tragic car accident. Um, and I was really, really going through a bad time and missing her dearly. And um, she... Graham, we're on camera, love, so be careful. Yeah. Oh, OK, so... <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry about that um I just wanted to um get, going back to my granddaughter I was really really missing her and then I had this most beautiful dream that um I I was in it I'm, I'm staying in the hall I'm, I'm, that's the only way I can describe it and my granddaughter was dancing in the middle of a circle and there was someone to the left of me. I know she was female. I couldn't see her, but I heard her. And she had the most beautiful melodic voice. And she said to me, here's your granddaughter. And my granddaughter was no longer the child. She had grown up into this beautiful young woman. And her hair was... Um, as, as beautiful as, as it ever was and it had grown and whatever. And I went, I, I saw her and I went, <gasps> Natalie, and I went running there. And as I got to the circle, this voice said, no, you stay here with me. We are showing you your granddaughter. She is fine. And then I woke up. Um, but that experience has never never left me and I know that even on the darkest days of her anniversary her birthday I hate August because both of those occasions were in that I know she's fine she's absolutely fine so I remember that dream and I'm forever very grateful for that but um I also had an experience where I was in a kitchen 
just an ordinary kitchen and my husband's mum was there his sister was there um his dad was there and it was just a bustly kitchen as it always was in my mother-in-law's kitchen um and I loved it and I said oh can I stay and this again this same familiar voice and I don't know who this lady is at my left shoulder behind me this beautiful melodic voice said no she can't stay she has to go back um and I've never never forgotten that so was I what were they just beautiful dreams or were I or was I actually with spirit because my son had been caught up in a terrorist attack and we didn't know if he was alive or dead and we were waiting um I, he was in the Royal Navy at the time and they were a target for the IRA and this was that time and um he'd got on a train at Waterloo to go back to Portsmouth to rejoin his ship um we were living right up the top of Scotland and I got a call from the Royal Navy to say my son hadn't returned to his ship. Now I knew he should have been there, whatever. And I went into panic mode because I know, I knew there'd been a bomb explosion. Had he been caught up in it? Um, he was very much a target of the IRA because of his job. Um, and the cottage that we had at the time had a very long winding lane. And I couldn't stand being indoors anymore. So I went down this winding lane. And again, I heard this same beautiful female voice. And it was the first time I'd heard it. And it was always to my left side. And all it said was, he's not with us. And as I walked back into my cottage, the phone was ringing and I picked it up. Um, and it was um, the Royal Navy saying, Mrs. Thomas, we're pleased to say your son is safely back on board and the train he'd got caught on or was on had got caught up um in the blast but they were actually outside the station and that the, the train had been held so this same lovely lady that I hear in spirit I can't tell you what she looks like but she has got the most beautiful voice I call her Elizabeth um and I I I, um, I asked her, her name and um it came back Martha and I said, no, you're Elizabeth to me. Um, and that's what I call her. So am I imagining this or is this a very real spiritual experience that I've had? Well, you're not imagining it at all. Uh, you, you are totally blessed, as we all are, to have guardian angels that are with us and, and helping us and helping us show how much spirit love us. Could that be in our dreams? Yes, no, yes, it can. Because whilst we're in our dream state, we are our most relaxed. Therefore, our vibration goes higher. We, you've got to remember, when we communicate with spirit, we've got to meet them halfway. They have got to lower their vibration and we have to higher ours. So in a dream state, you higher your vibration, they lower theirs and then they can communicate. Right. Just like when you're sat daydreaming and you see a flash go past in, in the corner of your eye, your, your vibration is relaxing and, and goes up higher naturally. So spirit can, can communicate with us through our dreams very easily. And what I got from all of those dreams, Lynn, is that you are loved and that they, your, your friends and your family, they're all in the most beautiful place. And you're lucky to be able to, to be shown this from spirit, you know? Yeah. And your guardian angel being able to communicate with you and you hear her angelic voice. Oh, you are so blessed, so blessed. And it oh, doesn't matter what she looks like. Yeah, that's not important. That's important. Because, because she is an, an angelic light being. Yeah. So you don't need to know if she's got blonde hair, brown hair, ginger hair. It doesn't matter because she hasn't got hair. Yeah, um, that's why they stand just behind us, because it's us humans that kind of want to put labels on everything to do with spirit. You don't need labels. Just know that these angelic beings love us and guide us and communicate with us. And, and that is beautiful, Lynn. Thank you so much for sharing. And she won't yeah. mind that I've called her Elizabeth in spring when she told me. Again, Martha. Names, names are not important to spirit. Not really 
Okay. Okay. You can Thank call you. it anything. Thank it's you. A of recognition for you. Um, yeah. What I want to say, ladies and people listening on Facebook, is people just don't realise the interaction that we have, have with the realms of spirit on a daily or a nightly basis. I had a similar experience, Lynn, when my dad passed away and I was grieving for him heavily. And then I went off to sleep and there was this sort of like Victorian type greenhouse. And for some reason, I was dreaming this, and I had to go into it and sit down. I sat down on a bench, and my dad walked in and sat down with me and spoke to me. You know, and all my grief disappeared. Oh, that's how, wonderful. You know, and even though I had connection with him before, it sort of like reinforced that connection and that love. So as Stacey was saying, well, when we when we sleep, we raise our vibration because we're at our most relaxed. And a good point that Stacey made was that we have to meet spirit halfway. A lot of people don't realise that. We have to create the energy for yeah. spirit to communicate. It's no good sitting there like that, you know, because that's lowering the energy. So dream state is one way that the realms of spirit, our loved ones, and I wanted to say guardian angel to you then as well, um, oh, perfect. Stacey just, just confirmed that with me. And yes, names are immaterial in spirit. When spirit, spirit, when people say to me, have you got a name? <laughs> I, I do get annoyed, all right? But, um, and they're only showing themselves in their physical form just purely for recognition because they, spirit, naturally, are light and colour. But we get bogged down in our material, don't we, Stacey? We get bogged yeah. down in our, our physical. And it's about raising our consciousness, our vibration to our higher selves, or ra raising our consciousness, our vibrational frequency. Katie Brindley's made a good point. I, um, I've met a lovely Katie, and um, she says, I had a, I hope she won't mind me saying, but um, Katie suffers with um, cerebral palsy, but she's also a fantastic serving medium, all right? And what she's saying is, I had a different experience as I was born not breathing. My parents were told I'd never walk, talk or have kids. I went on to do all three. I am poorly now, I'm older, but I work for spirit and so they help me every day. Oh, so okay. it's raising your energy, not only to communicate, but to get that healing all that physical transformation that can keep you healthy enough to work. What, what do you think of all that then, Stacey? I often say to people, it's not, I mean, back, if I go back 30 years, Stephen, I w was not as knowledgeable as I am now. And it is about enlightenment. So the more knowledge we gain, the more we listen to people that have experienced near deaths have experienced communicating with spirits and pass on these information the more like lynn is now more enlightened with knowledge from from what this conversation and that's what it's all about so you know it people there's never a stupid question that can be asked because it's it if anyone can ask me anything if i know the answer i'm going to share it with you and i'm not going to lie and make something up just to make myself try and sound more knowledgeable than i am okay there's no point in lying because i know for a fact my spirit guide would probably swipe me at the back of the head you know um, i would be punished in some way i'm sure <laughs> that is yeah. a joke they don't punish me um so yeah it's about learning and it's about sharing the knowledge and it's about enlightening yourself with more and more knowledge and looking up things, studying, you know, learn. We are so lucky in this day and age that we've got the big World Wide Web where we can look and study and like Stephen's gone and looked at other people that have had NDEs and, and listened to their experiences, you know, and honestly, it's so beautiful. I, I, I have listened to a couple of other people's NDEs. Um, there, I have met one person that didn't want to stay there and did 
you know, want to come back because he loved his wife dearly and didn't want to leave her. He said to me, how can you, how can you say you, you didn't want to come back here when you have children that you love dearly? I'm like, I didn't give them a thought. I, the, the love I felt, like, felt from spirit was far stronger, far, far stronger. This is going to make, make me sound really horrible and cold, but it's not meant to be. But the love I felt from spirit was, was far stronger than the love I felt for another human whilst I'm walking on this earth. It is so, so strong. I can't, I, Stephen, you've got to try and help me out here. It's not physical. You <laughs> your, your point about more than you that you can love a person on earth it's non-physical isn't it yeah i'll love my wife and put my arm around her i'll kiss her and all that that's all very physical it's it's a physical expression of affection isn't it but affection is an emotion isn't it yeah you know you so we express it physically but yeah you can't compare the love that spirit yeah. has in the it's, spirit world it's so strong so it's, it's like an ocean it's beautiful it's pu- is purely unconditional in a way that we, in our physical minds, mortal minds, physical bodies, mortal bodies, we can't understand. I can't put it into words, and I haven't met anybody that can. All I can say is, is that it's unconditional. I remember dying in my past lives, in one of my past lives, okay? And I was an horrible person. I was something like Attila the Hun. A lot of people will agree with that now. But anyway, um, I was really horrible, raping and pillaging and murdering and thieving and all the rest of it. Anyway, I went over to spirit. And you know what? The beings that came to me were just like what you've painted. All right. So it's not out of imagination or anything like that. They are there, but they just show us in that physical silhouette. Yeah. Just to make us feel comfortable, like Stacey said. And I begged to come back to Earth. To be in the physical, because I wanted to breathe. I wanted to run around the fields and everything like that. I didn't want to be in spirit. I didn't. But I can remember begging not to be, not to have a, I wanted to have a body. All right. So I was still attached to the physical way of life and everything like that. And do you know what they said to me? These beings, right, if we send you back, you're going to serve. You're going to be kind and you're going to be compassionate and you're going to be loving. And they chucked me back down. (laughs) You know. And um, I can remember, you know, as I was being born, it was, well, would it be kind of compassionate or would it be a murdering so-and-so? You know what I mean? There was still that energy from spirit or that, you know, as, as I was coming into the womb and everything like that. That's my memory anyway. But um, rather than me doing all the talking, um, Stacy, people don't realise just the interaction that we have with the realm of spirit and how much they support us yeah you know they take us out in dreams and help us with grieving or give us advice but they also inspire us in our everyday lives yes like like with you it's your art and hopefully a lot better poetry and that that poem that you discovered before we went on have you still got it in front of you yes yes so because back before my NDE, I was in a dark place and used to write really dark, horrible poems. But I was flipping through well, before we came on air to talk to Stephen. And I was like, oh, my God, I've forgotten I'd written this. So I'd like to share this poem. And this is pre, pre-NDE. And this should be called Hope, really, because that's what inspires. When I read it, that's what I was inspired to feel but it was named God's love. It's a guessing game, this thing called life. No answers are given to avoid the strife. We've knowledge to gain as we grow older and tragedies making our hearts grow colder. Yet on we struggle, harboring such pain, asking ourselves, what will we possibly gain? Time goes on, we get closer to the end and we have people to forgive and bridges to mend. Looking back on life, we remember the past. We start to wonder how long it will last. Turn to God and pray for his love. Hope that he'll take us to that land up above. I love that. If you trust me with it, I'll put that on a photo. 
for you and I'll send it back to you. Yeah, yeah. Because right. I think that should be out there. I really, mm -hmm. I really love that. But it also fits in line with what we're on about, doesn't it, Stacey? Okay. Um, you know, about how the realms of spirit, how, how connected we are to what we call God and the realms of spirit. You know, the realms of spirit aren't far away up on a cloud. It's all around us. Yeah, yeah. It's vibrating, you know, through this. Um, my guides have explained to me that the earth plane is a realm of spirit too, just that it yeah. vibrates in matter. Okay. Um, yeah. So that poem goes, lots of people on Facebook Live are saying it's beautiful. So well done, Stacey. But <laughs> I, I was taught, and I know I've said this before, and people might say, oh, here he goes again and all the rest of it. But once you've had your evidence survival, that's when your journey of discovery starts. Yes. And I really, I think your experience, Stacey, and realising what we're saying, oh, and I want to say this to everybody that's watching, how connected we are, yeah. how we can improve ourselves, not by like getting a bigger house or a bigger car or everything like that, or, or a better holiday, but, but improving ourselves inwardly, inwardly, so that we operate on a higher level, which means that we can communicate with higher levels of spirit and get more wisdom. You know, that, that is the journey of spiritualists. Yeah, yeah I'll shut up now. Just on. trust. That's that's what that's what spirit want us to do, is to trust in them that they know that they're we they've got our higher good. That you know, that's they won't do anything that isn't for our highest good. So, you know, I I and they also want us to ask, you know, you can sit there melancholy and going, oh, my life's miserable. Oh, my husband's a miserable. So oh. you can sit there and do that. Or you can say, do you know what, spirit, guide me to, I don't know, whatever your passion is, a knitting, crocheting club, art club. Give me some direction to give me some hope and to give me some some passion in my life because when you when you you're happy people around you are happy you have an effect on people around you your emotions affect the people around you you know so and you will attract like will attract like so i know that if i send out to the universe i want to be mindful peaceful happy that's the kind of people i'm going to get around me so, yeah, imagine yourself like a little magnet. Send out to the universe what you want to come back to you. Send out love, send out happiness, send out peace and joy. I know it sounds like an old cliche, but it's not. Yeah, Spirit love us, oh. and, and that's what they want us to be. They want us to be loving beings like them. Show kindness and joy to another person. Share knowledge to another person all the positive things that you can possibly do, do it, you know, don't react. My biggest lesson in life I've come to realize is not to react to negativity, not to get upset when someone says something that might upset me. I say to myself, hey, and this is going to sound condescending, and I don't mean it to sound condescending, but I say to myself, they know no better. I know better because I've had a near death. I know because I've seen my life and how hurtful I've been to other people. So I'm, I'm more aware than the person is in front of me saying something spiteful. So it's not their fault because their time will come and they will learn their lessons too. So I learn, I'm trying to learn because it's always, a, a you know, a, a journey not to react to someone that can be quite spiteful or nasty yeah there's there's quite a lot i want to say on that and that that's beautiful stacy and that is the journey on earth isn't it but um spirit teaches to be compassionate to those that are negative towards us or live a negative way of life and that's very true but what what i found expanding on what, what we're already saying stacy is it's yeah, you know, it's easy for us to say be more loving, more kind, compassionate, and more loving to self, kind and compassionate as well. But with, with that comes lessons, doesn't it? Mm. You know, and that is the true spiritual path. Yeah. You know, on this earth, 
what what one of the beautiful things I found about your um um NDE, Stacy, is that you you through that experience in that time you were there in spirit, you learned how to forgive yourself. Yeah. And I think that that's something that we all battle with from time to yeah. time. You know. Yeah. I, I mean. You know, it's a hard one to forgive yourself isn't it yeah yeah because we are we are so judgmental on ourselves and to forgive truly forgive, forgive not just say oh i forgive myself truly forgive um i don't think we truly truly do forgive ourselves you know in it even 20 years down the line after you've said something or you've done something do you truly forgive yourself? I don't think so. We try, but we carry that little bag of guilt. You know, we will always carry because it's a human condition that we can't help it. So um, I'm, I am lucky in my NDE because all that guilt, all that judgment, everything was washed away. It really was a soul cleansing, which enabled me to kind of start afresh. So you know, at 45, I had a fresh start, but I had an advantage because I was in a 45 year old's body, not a newborn's body. <laughs> so um, I and I also had previous knowledge of my pre coma life. So it was almost like a it was almost like a, a, a new life. You know, a new me, a new me put back in my life with a new outlook on life a new so uh that doesn't happen very often it, I mean because in this lifetime my life right now the one I've lived for the last 51 years I stabbed two people I've thrown someone off a balcony I took copious amounts of alcohol I was not a nice person yeah but Fast forward to 45 when I had my ND, I had my soul cleansing. I do not drink alcohol. I do not lose my temper. I do not do horrible things to another human being because I was shown the reactions of my actions and they were bad. And so I've learned a lot from that NDE. And thank you, Stacey. Thank you for being honest, because I think we have to be honest with ourselves and others. My little story was that I was a hard drinking and better than snorting nightclub doorman and security officer, store detective at the time, um, going through very, very bad relationships. And I've still got my caution of warrior. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's like a police baton, extendable. All right. So I was hard drinking and fighting lots and the doctor told me I was a functioning alcoholic and taking class A drugs. I'd sober up enough to do a demonstration. But that was the life I was leading until it all went, until I asked spirit to put me on my proper purpose path. Okay? Um, because my life was in a rut. Um, the ex-girlfriend went and I found myself sobering up in my flat in Slough. And spirit then said, come and work for us. And that's how how I got back, but I knew then, and Spirit said to me, you've got to practice what you preach. So then I knew I had to be loving, kind and compassionate. And through learning to be, and how I communicated with people as well, that's, you know, like you were saying about the words um, that you say, and in effect, we become mindful of them, don't we? Yeah. But, and that's when I started on my journey. And through that journey, back into serving spirit more, more effectively. And, you know, through that, right, I'm going to be loving, kind and compassionate and positive and all that, and put all that out there. But also memories come back up of the past, don't they, Stacey? Yeah. And you understand why you felt that. And you understand, but not more importantly, why the other person was doing what they were doing or saying or doing what they were doing. And it, from my own experience, it does bring peace. Yeah. You know, it does bring that enlightenment. 
but yeah. you're right we never truly forgive ourselves we always have that little guilt bag all right but what i want to say is we can learn to understand it more and we can learn to become more at peace with ourselves but but we have to be true to ourselves yeah there's no point lying to yourself no point lying to yourself yeah sorry that bag will get smaller that guilt bag will get smaller and smaller you know it's your you it that is your emotion your shadow work call it what you like yeah that you have to deal with but i dealt with it spirit helped me deal with it i wish they would help more people and lighten i i honestly wish people would experience what i experienced because before my before the coma and the near death although i believed in life after death there was that tiny part of me that 10 percent that was like but what if it is just my imagination? What if I am going crazy? What if, you know, I mean, if you spoke to a doctor and said to the doctor, I'm seeing things and hearing things, you go, you're schizophrenic, you know? So um, after my near death, that I haven't got, there was nothing. I completely, 100% trust in spirit, yeah? There's no doubt anywhere in my brain. And I'm so lucky with that so so lucky and I treasure that I treasure the wonderfulness of 100% trusting in spirit uh, and I don't care what anyone says right you there is gonna be unless you've seen spirit and had this wonderful love experience with an NDE you're even if it's one percent you're always gonna have that tiny bit of doubt going yeah but what if because we've got those little voices in our head, what ifs. Oh, yeah. Try and live without the what ifs. That's what spirit wants us to do. You know, embrace life wholeheartedly, love wholeheartedly, forgive another person if you can, because that's difficult. And that is pure spiritual development, folks. It's not just learning how to link with spirit. It's your eternal spiritual progression, isn't it? Yeah. Your eternal spirit. And we as spiritualists have got to become more aware of that. Yeah. You know, just turning up on a Wednesday or a Sunday night, well, I'm going to see if he's any good, see if he gives me the evidence. <laughs> no, no it's not. not very good evidence. He's no good. Um, or she's no good. <laughs> this is the greater thing that spirit are talking about. You know, become aware. And I think as spiritualists, we should become more aware of just the interaction that we have. And we, and like, what I wanted to say earlier when, when you were talking is we've got to be open to it. Yeah. Can't be bogged down in our material. All oh, my husband, all oh, my wife's are so and so. I hate my job. Mm. Um, oh, I've got this pain in my knee and all the rest of it. Or still being bitter and twisted about things that happened 20 years ago. We've got to become aware of it. And this is what spirit are trying to desperately trying to get through to people. Yeah. But we're on a spiritual developmental journey on this earth. Yeah. Not just there to provide evidence, but that's just my gratitude. That's what, you know, we should show poor gratitude. Well, you wake up in the morning and you should be grateful that you're alive and you've got yeah. two hands, two legs. Uh, you know, we can get jump out of bed. Well, we can drag ourselves out of bed, but be grateful that we get to see another day, you know. Do you know how many times I hug and tell my kids how much I love them? I wasn't like that before. I was cold. I was like, oh, you know, my kids would go, oh, can I have a cuddle? And I'm like, oh, now it's like, yes, come here, have a yeah, cuddle. Thanks. You know, <laughs> it's just every day is, is people, yeah. my, my friends noticed the massive difference in me. Massive. Like, and even now, five years down the road, right, if something goes on in the material world, you know, Stacy, so-and-so said this, I'm like, whatever. What? what's wrong with you normally you'd go around there and grab them by the throat yeah well I've changed and that my dearest friends are still five years down the road waiting for the old Stacy to come back where's she gone you used I to be yeah. you, you know what I mean so and I'm like she ain't coming back she has been cleansed and she is happy and she's not coming back so get used to it yeah, funnily enough, but I, I say to the wife, you know, when certain things have happened, I've said I could deal with it, but I'm not going back to that life again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm going to deal with it the way 
with the flow of spirit and with the universal law and everything. I was going to say something, but I've forgotten what I was going to say. But, um, you know, gratitude is an energy, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's not you sitting up in bed in the morning going, oh, thank you, thank you. That's sending out energy into the universe. Any emotion we feel is going out into the universe and the universe responds to that. Like will attract like. Yes. This is what we're saying, getting back to earlier points. If you're miserable and horrible, then you will attract miserable or horrible. Like um, Stacey says, we are a magnet. We're, a ma we're, we're, we're an energetic field. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and because we're bogged down in our mortal physical self, we can't see that. But me and Stacey here telling you, be aware of the energy that you're sending out, the energy that you feel within. And, um, you know, and you will attract not only lessons, and if you learn them lessons, you will vibrate on a higher level, but you will also experience this love and this guidance yeah. that me and Stacey are talking about. Um I know, Stacey, that you're inspired to do some lovely paintings. Okay. Um, I don't want about to talk about psychic energy because that's boring. All right. <laughs> but, you know, plenty of people talk about psychic energy, but let's leave it out. Um, and, and even so, there's a great love in it, isn't it? Because they want, spirit wants to inspire you. Your spirit team, your guardian, they want to inspire you to bring stuff to earth. Like with art or me with poems or doing life with you and everybody else they want us to bring something into the equation don't they yeah um i mean art for me is being mindful and happy uh it's my inner peace that's what gives me my greatest decision is what shall i paint next <laughs> you know what well, i love color i love color that that heart picture behind me yeah I love colour and uh, my kitchen is full of paintings that I've done um, mm. and I love it. I, I just, at the moment though, I'm going through uh, a phase of wanting to do something on a slightly more, and I'm not religious, but on a slightly more religious tone, like the hand of Jesus that I painted and I gifted that to Patrick. I sent it over to him in Ireland. Yeah, I, I see, like, yeah. I wanted that one. Oh, bless you. Yeah. I was going to write to you, but anyway, yeah, carry on. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I've, I've, three people have said to me, Stacey, I would love that painting. Um, after I'd sent it, obviously, to Patrick. And I was like, wow. I mean, and sending a copy is, 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 I don't know. It's not the same as it having a copy of it that's not the original. Yeah, original was much better. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted it because Jesus plays a very strong part in my own personal journey. Yeah, you know, not in a religious sense. All right, don't worry. I'm not going to get a dog collar and a frock. You know, but um, he comes Jesus to come. He's a wonderful healer. He was the best. Oh, healer. amazing! Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what I like about him. There was one comment. Um, that, that made me chuckle for quite some time on another live. Jesus must have practiced Reiki. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I nearly said something. But, <laughs> I'll, I'll back. Um, but yeah, I, I, I won't say why it's impossible for him to practice Reiki. But anyway, he's got all that universal source energy there. So a half, far higher vibration that we can understand. What, what yeah. Like it all. Right, but anyway, um, but what I'm always saying, Stacey, is spirit isn't there to prove survival. All right, survival's good and it's lovely to connect people to their loved ones, it's brilliant. But spirit come forward to raise the consciousness of the human race, yeah, through our, whether we NDE or not, or through our journeys in life. That inspiration and that guidance is constant. And but through the inspiration, they come to give us something that we can share with everybody that will help to raise the consciousness. Like Do you know your... what I like? Pardon? I like encaustic wax because you can put the wax on the iron, slide it across the paper, and spirit appear in front of you in that wax. 
you know you get messages in that wax straight from like and you can share those pictures with the people you're the sitters that you're reading for I mean I love doing that and things that I can share that's from spirit directly like you you get there Stephen and you can say I've got your granny here blah, blah, blah. I can the, what I love about the way I work is I I, I do this in caustic wax and I go here you are and I post it to people and people say oh but you know why you it, 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 co it costs you money to post and I'm like are you kidding the price of a stamp compared to the joy that this person is going to receive is no comparison I will quite happily send people for the price of a proxy stamp uh, and see their joy of this beautiful message that I've given them and they can physically see the spirits in, in these pictures, you know? How can you put a price on that? You can't. That's right, yeah. It's like when I've auctioned my poetry book, you know, and somebody's won it, you know, for charity and that, and I, I, actually the postage costs more than the book, all right? But it's what they're going to get out of that. Yeah you know, whatever they see in that poetry. Believe it or not, Stacey, I'll do sand reading as well as tarot. Wow. I know most tarot readers will scoff at me. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've seen names, I've seen faces in the sand, and all this, it, just like we're in, on Caustic Art. I remember the first time I read sand was in Circle, and I, I could see this being the sand, but I also got the name Vanessa. And... Ian, another circle set saying, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so and all that. So spirit is in everything, really, what yeah. I want to say is. You can see, it's like you get these people put, putting pictures up on Facebook. What can you see? Half the time, I can't see nothing. But I was saying, some other people are saying, oh, there's a face there. There's a grandmother standing over there. There's a Native American over there. But if you look, you can see spirit in everything. Yes, and you will only see spirit if you're meant to see spirit in that said thing, you know. Like yeah. you said, I, I mean, some mornings I'll do a coffee and I'll go, wow, what can you see? If you can see a message in that, because spirit is in everything, even the frothy coffee, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they yeah. will get a message to you. Yeah. They will get a message to you any way they can to bring joy to your life. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And this is what I've been saying. Signs aren't just white feathers, butterflies and robins. It can be anything. Yeah. If you're open and attuned, it can come through in how in, in an emotion, in a thought. Yeah. Not just a physical sign like a robin or a butterfly or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um or some or, or they guide somebody to say something to you. They put that strong thought in somebody's mind and, and they repeat it to you. Um so guidance and inspiration comes in many, many different forms, but we have just got to be open and aware to it. Or aware and you can it. test them. You can test spirits. Oh, yeah, yeah. I you, can, you can yeah. say, spirit, the next person or the, in the next couple of people that I have a conversation with, if you truly are around, I need a sign. I want you to say, and then pick a word that wouldn't norm, someone wouldn't normally say, like fire guard. I mean, who the hell's going to bring the word fire guard into a conversation? And then before you know it, someone's chatting away and go oh yeah my nan gave away a fire guard the other day and it just it's all the synchronicities i love all of yeah. it i love all the signs synchronicity is another subject stacy we could go on about that for another hour or <laughs> no it could be an energetic field if you're vibrating on the right energy raising your your energy your vibration as we call it then you come in sync with the universe don't you you come yeah. in sync with what we call god and things come to you in synchronicity yeah. i'm using big words today see you start <laughs> all right but um yeah it's we're so powerful people don't realize it do they stacy no you need to harness the power use it for your good and others you know it, it well, is and then it it will magnify i agree 100 percent there with you stacy um what I want to say is what spirit taught me was the power is a raw product. It can be used for anything, you know, yeah. good and bad and indifferent. So it's the intention that we have. We are powerful beings, you know. 
spirit vibrating through the physical and the material. And but it's our intentions that mean everything, that doesn't it, Stacey? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I often used to set the intention with my ex-husband. I would send I would send him telepathic thoughts, make me a coffee. Make me a coffee. <laughs> And he would make me, and he's a Virgo, guys, like Virgo men, stubborn, don't want to do a lot. I used to say, make me a coffee. And he'd turn around and go, do you want a coffee? And I was like, yes. <laughs> well, I've done simple things, like somebody's got a box of donuts. And I've got, cool, they look nice. All of my money, they mean thought. And then, and then two minutes later, I turn around, would you like them? <laughs> you know, things like that. Or I stood behind a bloke in the pub once. I shouldn't have done this. Go and buy me a beer. <laughs> and went, right, and I didn't really know him. He said, "Would you like a beer, mate? I'd like to chat to you." All right, and little things like that. But that's using it for self. But it just demonstrates, like Stacey's saying, the power that we have. Yeah, and that comes in thought. Spirit communicate with thought. Spirit tell us that thought is the most um, powerful thing in the universe. It is our energetic field, born of a better way. Of it putting it is thought yep right. emotion color spirit of thought emotion color yeah i could go on braiding so could stacy but anyway it's been <laughs> a real pleasure to have you on stacy oh you're and very well this conversation i knew it'd be great anyway but this conversation went on a lot better a lot better than even i thought it would so that's great never uh, ever Stephen. No, never. i really but want to thank you <laughs> Don't sorry put expectations on something and then you'll be like oh well that went better than i anticipated yeah well, yeah <laughs> it's like i'm always telling people never to expect from spirit you know because there's people there that they want to be the next Derek Cora in five minutes or something like that okay i've got my own thoughts on Derek, so i'll keep quiet all right but um uh, or they want to be super medium in a couple of weeks or whatever it doesn't work like that okay it's a long developmental process a life process and um you know um but i'm always telling people not to expect like i said to you stacy these are the subjects i'd like us to talk about but i don't format anything or anything yeah. like I'll, I'll say this and you'll say that just let it roll and that's, that's the way it should be so if we let our lives roll and we have have that with our powerful self we have that good intention my name's Stephen Christine. Anyway, Roland, a lot of people call me Roland. Um, Christ the wrong one. Christ the wrong. Yeah, <laughs> no, Christ the wrong. Okay. Yeah, no worries, Christine. Uh, I meant to say I'll Stephen. Be... Yeah, yeah, no worries. A lot of people call me okay. Roland. So Mr. Roland. <laughs> but it's time for one of my poems now. And hopefully, Spirit are going to draw me to a poem that's apt for our conversation. No, I'm not going to expect it, Stacey, all right? But they, they, they've had a sneaky habit of um, drawing me to a poem that, that just fits the conversation. Right. Oh, right. That one, I think. Right. This one I wrote about me sitting in the power and with our connection. We've all got this connection. It's not just people like me and Stacey that have got this connection. It's everybody. All right. But I, it's a little poem I wrote called Welcome. And this is me just sitting down quietly. And I sat down quietly one day and this poem came from it, right? Welcome, seeking refuge from my earthly path. I sit and exhale the stresses of life, opening heart and mind to spirit. My heart embraces the serene stillness of this timeless moment to sit and be with spirit. I welcome in eternal friends who join me in this sacred space, a, uni a unity of souls as one in tranquility. Thanks for listening, folks. I enjoyed reading that out, Stacey. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Loved it. I think that goes along quite nicely with what we've been talking about. Thank you so much for staring, not staring, sharing. <laughs> <laughs> sharing. And I'm sober, folks, believe me, I am, right? But thank you for sharing your experiences and your knowledge. It's been absolutely wonderful. We must get you on again. Yes, more than happy to. If you want to think of a subject that you're passionate about, that you would like to discuss with me and everybody else that might come on, please do, or I'll think of something. And that the Spirit will say to me, get Stacey on, and we'll do it that way. 
All right. Lovely. Chris Rowe, if you're free next Sunday, you can come on if you want to. If you're still around, I'll message you anyway. So I want to know what this soul reading is all about. So you can share, you can share that. It. Oh, good. Yeah. Because I'm only a silly little spiritualist medium, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'd like to know what others, because I think we're all, it was call it gifts. But I we're think all we're gifted. Aware on many different levels. So if somebody comes along with, like Chris, with soul reading, I know nothing about, I want to get them on and listen to them. All right, and ask some sort of questions. And like Stacy said earlier, folks, there's no such thing as a stupid question. No. Because you're 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 talking from your level of awareness. We as mediums, because people come to me and say, I know this is a stupid question. I say, Well, it's not a stupid question because you need to ask it. Right. And if I can answer it, I will. Or if I can't answer it, I'll ask my spirit guides what they think and they answer, you know, and they give me the words to say. Um so there's no such thing as uh, a stupid question because we're all on our own different level of awareness and understanding and consciousness and everything like that. Once again, thank you, Stacey. That's <laughs> okay. okay. I will you... take a picture and send you the picture of the poem, God's oh, Love. Brilliant. What, what I'll do is, if you like, or send me a picture that you'd like them words put on. I will put the words to the picture with full credit to you, and I'll send it back to you. And please blat it all over Facebook and wherever else you want to put it. Bless you. I think that should be shared. I really do. All right? And um, Lynn, thank you for your contribution. Christine, oh, no thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Stephen and Tracy. I'll yeah. call you Stephen from now on. <laughs> and if anybody, you know, in the future, if anybody else would like to join us on Zoom, um, and it will save me reading out um, reading comments as well. I would like to contribute in any way to, with with the guests that I have on, and you know, and myself. That would be great because I think it, it it spreads so much knowledge. It does, and it makes me and my guests think as well, which is great. All right. <laughs> anyway, God bless you all. Thanks for joining. Thank us. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Next. Next next Sunday's um, coffee time will be with me and Chris Rao if he's up for it. Okay, if not, I'll have to get somebody else. God bless you all. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right.